In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. We call them the Franks. In unreckoned number, horse and foot, lord and commoner alike, they cross the threshold to the east with a lust for war and plunder. Their ambition, to seize the holy city of Jerusalem and all Bilad Sham beyond. Terror spread among the Muslims. City by city, we succumbed. The infidels prevailed, but their lawless conquest would be answered by the roar of our righteous lions. These pages tell the story of our struggle, of the courage of great leaders who fought for our land and our faith. With God's favor upon them, they unsheathed their swords and sharpened their spears and earned their place in our eternal memory. I begin the story at the last bastion of the faithful, the ancient fortress of Tyre. May God protect her. Much of Belair the Sham fell to the invaders. For many years, our rulers did little to turn fortune to our favor. Some fought against their brethren seeking petty advantages and even joining with the enemy. But others were steadfast. God sent us three worthy leaders whose boldness restored courage and hope to the faithful. First came Zangi, who, with the fury of wildfire, seized the city of Edessa. Next came Zangi's son, Nur din who called for unity among the Muslim forces, and all hearts were attached to his cause. Boldest of them all was Nur din's student, Salah din Yusuf, whom the Franks called Saladin. As a young man, Saladin showed great promise. Blessed with a mind sharp and bright as a Damascene blade, he would one day prove himself a skilled tactician. But like all on the path to greatness, he would first be tested in the forge fire of war. against Christian and Muslim rulers alike. Saladin, in time, rose to power, but a dreadful turmoil bedeviled his realm. A demon disguised as a man, one Renald of Châtillon, preyed on Muslim merchants and pilgrims. With all the folly of a man deranged, Renald dared gnash at the heart of Islam itself. Saladin would hunt this dishonorable wretch over land and sea. Saladin's eye was fixed on Jerusalem. He, the righteousness of the faith, desired nothing more than to bring the Aqsa sanctuary back into the fold of the faithful. At this time, the demon Renald broke yet another treaty, wickedly seizing a caravan of Muslim goods and traders. Saladin swore an oath to slay this monster by his own hand. 
calling to arms every man, sword, and bow under his banner, Saladin made ready to keep his vow. In rushing to their doom at Hatim, the Franks had emptied out the great garrisons of the occupied cities. Their gates were unguarded, and their people without a blade to defend them. Trembling before Saladin's eminence, they submitted. Beirut, Acre, Ascalon, Bethlehem. Until the victorious day came when the Sultan entered Jerusalem itself. But the sacred city would yet see much bloodstained struggle for her hand. More than 60 years passed in this way. The Franks again renewed their quest for Jerusalem. This time they believed in their unending folly, that Egypt was the path to their glory. Had they not learned from their misfortune? Did they think our roars were mere whispers on the wind? Egypt unleashed her lions. The commander of the army, Baibars al Bundukdari, assembled a host of Mamluk warriors so great that the whole earth shook beneath their step. At the ailing Sultan's side, his beloved wife, Shajar dur our tree of pearls, ably took charge in his stead. With cleverness and caution, she directed Egypt's defense. The Franks would swing their swords at shadows, stumbling with all confidence ever deeper into the lion's den. A new power rose under the banner of former slaves. The Sultanate of the Mamluks was born. The ravages of the Franks, monstrous though they were, could not match the sudden terror brought upon us by the thunder and malice of the Mongols. Like the unstoppable spread of a plague, they were upon us. One after another, we fell. Baghdad, Aleppo, Damascus. Our lands were choked with smoke and ran with blood. But Sultan Qutuz, may God be merciful to him, would not stand idle nor flee in fear. He gathered his Mamluk army and marched. The Mongol scourge harried our lands again and again. Each new attack we repelled with great vigor, our spirits emboldened and our arrows guided by God's hand. But the heart of the Sultan Qalawun was deeply anguished, knowing the Mongols might join with the Franks and crush the lands of Islam from east and west. More vexing still, the Franks possessed the port of Acre, an open door to any new infidel army. The hour had come to close all such doors, to rid Bilad Sham of every last fortress of the unbelievers. The Mamluk realm was strong as cedar, though its rulers came and went like the winds of the Middle Sea. The changing breeze calmed for a time when Sultan al Ashraf Barsabe came to rule, and prosperity settled across our lands. 
But a resting lion attracts biting flies. The ancient blight of piracy plagued us at sail and ashore. The accursed king Janus of Cyprus granted warm welcome to wicked men seeking riches and slaves. These thieves and killers assaulted our towns and our people, carrying off in great number whatever they pleased. May God curse them. The lion awoke. Barsa Bay gathered a great invasion fleet. A fleet so terrible as to fill the entire horizon. There would be no forgiveness for the wicked. The Sultan's fleet returned victorious with a fortunate few of our stolen families. And the wicked Frankish king in chains. Some say he was paraded through the jeering crowds of Cairo, shackled and barefoot, riding on a lame donkey. He kissed the ground at the Sultan's feet, they say. Others tell a more dignified tale. The Sultan greeted the king as a guest and imprisoned him in comfort. Perhaps this could be true. Be he cruel or benevolent, Sultan Bersabe has sealed the dominance of Egypt over this incessant pest. My story ends today. Yet our story will go on. Just as the tales of our great heroes are retold in these pages, so our triumphs yet to come will be added to their legacy. Inshallah. I pray this blessed peace will last the rest of our days. But as God knows, the winds of war seldom sleep.